Okay, here we have a Scott pump built on a 56J motor. It's a small, close coupled end suction pump. I have it pointing up. Usually it is horizontal in the piping. When you take this apart, you can either take it out of the piping, which is kind of difficult. You can leave this in the piping. There's only four bolts holding the rotating assembly into the casing or the volute, and you can pull that out. I've got it here because I don't have it piped up. So I'm going to show you how to take this apart, show you what's inside it, show you how to put it back together, show you a couple of tricks that are going to save you a little bit of time. Hang with me. The first step in disassembly, whether it's in the piping and horizontal or whether it's freestanding and vertical like this, is to take the bolts that hold the casing to the bracket out. You want to leave these bolts that hold the motor on in place for a little while. All we're going to do is pull the rotating assembly out of this casing. So I've already taken these bolts out and the casing comes off, revealing the impeller. Now the next step is going to be to take the impeller off. Here's how we do it. Okay, once we have the casing off, we see the impeller. This being a pump with a 56 J-frame motor. 56 J-frame motor has a threaded shaft and the impeller is screwed on to the motor shaft so you don't pull it off, it has to unscrew. There is a jam nut on the impeller to hold it in place. I've already loosened that. Once you pull the jam nut out, you will be ready to unscrew the impeller. Now, sometimes they're a little bit hard to get out, so I'm going to show you a couple of techniques for holding the shaft still while you unscrew the impeller. Okay, once the casing is off, we're ready to take the impeller off. A lot of times the impeller will be stuck to the shaft and won't just unscrew, so we're going to look for a way to fix the shaft of the motor so we can unscrew that. A lot of times, if you can see through here, there's a fan. It's very good to have the motor unwired before you do this, and then you can, you can jam a screwdriver in there, hold the fan still, which holds the, the uh, shaft still, and unscrew the impeller. On most motors, there is also a slot on the back of the shaft. You can put a screwdriver in it and hold the shaft steady while you unscrew the impeller. And on some of them, through the back vent, you can see a fan, and also some of them will have an external fan. Any of these ways to hold the shaft of the motor still while you unscrew the impeller will work. But again, unhook the electricity from the motor before you proceed. Once we have the impeller off, we see the rotating head of the seal kit. I'd like you to notice that the shaft sticks up just a little bit out of the seal kit. That's going to become an important little area for us in just a couple of minutes. Now once we have taken the rest of the bolts out of the motor bracket that's holding it to the motor, the easiest way to get this whole apparatus out is to just plain pull it up because that's going to bring it all up. That will take the rotating head off the sleeve and take the motor bracket off in one fell swoop. In the motor bracket is the stationary seat there is a receiver for that. The easiest way to get that out is to turn it over. You can see it from there and then just to push it out. Sometimes you'll have to bang pretty hard. Uh, we're going to just tap this out. This is a... Then once it is out, this area right here needs to be very clean. So take your screwdriver or whatever and clean all the debris out of there. Take a Take a brush if you need to, but that needs to be good clean and make sure the metal is in good shape before you proceed. So we've got the stationary seat out, we've got the bracket off, we've got the impeller off, so we're ready to put this back together with a new seal kit. When you get your seal repair kit for your pump, there's a couple of different versions. All of them have a stationary seat. Some of them have a rotating head that is separate from the spring. And some of them, like the one we just took apart, has a rotating head and spring that is made together. It really doesn't matter which one you have, you're going to put it together the same way. So let's get going and show you how to do it. Okay, we've got our brand new motor. This is a three-phase motor. With a seal kit with a three-phase motor, you're going to have what's called a D-washer or a anti-rotation washer. This washer has to fit over the impeller and under the impeller nut. So in order for that to fit on the shaft, you're going to have to flatten a piece of the shaft. If you're taking apart a pump and you're reusing the motor, it's probably already done. If it is a three-phase motor, single-phase motors, this is not required. Three-phase motors, it is required. So with your new motor, you're going to want to flatten that shaft. If you'll remember right, when we took a look at this, the, station, the rotating head of the seal came up and left about three-eighths of an inch of space above it. 
So what we're going to do is we're going to take some channel locks or vice grips or something and hold that and then we're going to take a file and flatten that shaft just enough to put the dewasher on. That usually means taking the threads off and you want to take them off for about a half inch. You don't have to take them off all the way down but about a half inch so that that dewasher will go on the shaft. You don't have to take more off than is necessary. Okay, we're ready to put our pump back together. We have our new 56J frame motor. We have flattened a spot on the threaded portion of the shaft to receive the D washer or anti-rotation washer because this is a three-phase motor. Again, with a single-phase motor, you do not need to do that because the motor cannot spin backwards. This one can spin either way. If it spins in reverse, it can unscrew itself from the impeller, causing some pretty good problems. So you want to have flattened that. We're ready to go. The first step is to put the motor bracket on and we're going to put our bolts in. I'm not going to tighten those up right now. I know you know how to do that. But we want to get that fixed onto the motor. The next step is to put the stationary seat in the receiver that we have cleaned. We're going to lubricate that just a little bit. Either with the lubrication that came with the kit or with some soap. We're not going to use any kind of oil or petroleum product because it'll soften the elastomers, the rubber parts of the seal kit. That'll push down in there. You don't want to push with anything sharp or hard because the seal surfaces have to be like a mirror. You don't want to scratch them or gouge them, so we're going to push them in with our thumbs. Uh, the next step is to put the rotating head on. It may be, again, like we looked at, a separate head and spring or a unitized head and spring. The graphite portion goes down on the stationary seat, the shiny side goes up. There's usually some kind of a mark, but we want the shiny side up toward the impeller. The graphite portion of this goes down toward the stationary seat, and that's going to push down all the way. The next thing that goes on is the impeller, and as that screws on, since our threads are nice and clean, it's doing it very easily. But in order to get it tight, we're going to need to put something into the motor, to hold the shaft still, whether you can get in this way, hold a slotted piece in the back, a fan in the back, you have to get that good and snug down there. The next thing that goes on is the D washer, and that goes down all the way. The next thing is the impeller bolt. Once you get the impeller bolt on there, finger tight, we're going to tighten it up by putting something in the impeller to hold it, and then we're going to tighten that up. Real, real snug. You don't want to strip those threads, and you lost a few threads because of the dewasher, so you want to make that good and snug, but you don't have to get it overly tight because with that dewasher, the anti rotation washer, the impeller cannot push on that bolt to screw it. It can only push on it, so it's going to be on there real good. The next thing with the kit, usually you'll get an O ring or a gasket, whatever it takes for that pump. This one requires an O ring, so we're going to put that on there, and then finally, we will put if we've got it out of the piping, we'll put the casing back on. If, it's, if this part is still in the piping, what you will do is slide your rotating assembly into it and put your casing bolts back on. Have a good day.